and thanks for joining us for another video from FBC Kids. It's Robert here and today we'll be learning some more wonderful truths from the Bible. But before we do all that, let's clear away all the cobwebs by starting off with some lovely singing. So whenever you hear the music, let's sing our very best together. Today, boys and girls, I want to tell you a story about four men and four trees. Now, this story, these four men and these four trees are found in the Bible. And to help you to remember everything that I'm about to say, I'm going to use words that all begin with the letter A as we describe each one of them. Now, the first of these four men is found at the very beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis. His name is Adam. There we read that Adam was hiding behind a tree. And the reason? He was ashamed. Having eaten of the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was hiding away from God because he knew that he had disobeyed the command of God. Now there was no need for Adam to eat of this tree. God had not been hard on Adam. In fact, Adam was allowed to eat of any of the other trees in the garden, but not this one. Sadly, boys and girls, Adam disobeyed. And as soon as he ate of the forbidden fruit, guilt flooded his soul. His eyes were opened. And being ashamed of what he had done, Adam hid away from God. Why? Because he didn't want to face up to the consequences of his sinful activity. Now, if the truth be told, things have not changed one bit since Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. Because every time a boy or a girl does something wrong, perhaps they have broken something of value, one of mum's ornaments, something that they shouldn't have even been touching in the first place. Or perhaps they have done something on someone in the playground in school. They will either hide away the thing that they have broken, or they themselves will run away and hide because they simply don't want to face the consequences of their wrong behaviour. Now they might be somewhat clever, and they might be able to cover up for a while, or they might be able to hide something that they have done wrong from a parent or a teacher, but they can't hide anything from God. Do you know what the Bible says? Thy God seest me. And that brings us nicely to the second man and the second tree. Now the word to describe this second man was the word is the word astonished. He was astonished. Now we find out why in John chapter 1. Now this second man, he wasn't hiding behind a tree like Adam. Rather, he was sitting under a tree. His name was Nathaniel. And as he sat there under the tree, his friend, his pal Philip, came running all out of breath and all excited to see him. You see, boys and girls, both these men loved the Lord. And they had been reading the scriptures together. And they had learned that God was going to send a Saviour, a Messiah, into the world to save men and women, boys and girls, from perishing in their sin. Philip was ever so excited because having already seen the Lord Jesus, having already heard the things that he said, and having seen the miracles he was performing, he was totally convinced that this man 
was indeed the Messiah, the Son of God sent from heaven. So he urged Nathanael to get up from under the tree and come with him to meet the Lord Jesus. Upon meeting the Saviour, Nathanael was astonished at what the Lord Jesus had to say to him. Because the Lord Jesus said, Nathanael, before Philip called you, when you were sitting under the fig tree, I saw you. But even more astonishing was what the Lord said next to Nathanael. Looking right into this man's heart and life, the Lord Jesus said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now, boys and girls, that word guile is an old English word that just means wicked or bad. In other words, the Lord Jesus, as God, could see what was going on in this man's heart. The Saviour could see that there was no dishonesty, no deceit, or any desire for any sort of wickedness in this man's life. You see, boys and girls, Nathaniel sought to live his right life a right before God. And I wonder today, as God looks into your heart, what does he see? Does he see a heart that has come humbly and sought him for forgiveness and cleansing? Or sadly, does he still see a heart and a life that's running about after all manner of wickedness and sinful behaviour? And if that's the case, what then can be done to change all this so that you might avoid being condemned for your sin? How can you be accepted by God rather than being rejected by him and punished by him for your wrongdoing? Well, that brings us nicely to the third man that I want to tell you about on the third tree. And you can read about this in Luke chapter 19. There you will find that this man was up the tree. And he was up the tree because no one else in the crowd down below him would let him through their ranks to see what was going on along the footpath. You see, this crowd hated him. His thieving ways, his greed, his lies, his awful selfish behaviour. And they wanted nothing to do with him. And his name? His name was Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And as a tax collector, he had been taken far, far, far more than he should have been from the people. However, whenever the Lord came walking down through that crowded street in Jericho that particular day, something remarkable happened because he stopped. And the Saviour looked up into the sycamore tree where Zacchaeus was and he called for him to come down. And you know what, boys and girls? Zacchaeus obeyed. He responded to that call immediately. And in obedience, he came down at once. And what a change took place in his life. The Bible says that the Saviour went to Zacchaeus' house. They had a conversation held behind closed doors. The Bible doesn't record what was said. But in the end, despite all of his sinful ways, Zacchaeus was shown mercy. He had been forgiven. And the Lord Jesus was willing to accept him just as he was. And the wonderful news for you today is this. Just as Zacchaeus was accepted and pardoned and forgiven, you too, if you respond to the tender voice of the Saviour calling you to come, you will be accepted, you will be pardoned, and you will be forgiven as well. Now, how is all this possible? Well, that brings us to the fourth man, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells me that he wasn't behind a tree, or under a tree, or up a tree, but the Bible makes it clear that he was upon the tree. Now, what does that mean? Well, boys and girls, the cross upon which the Saviour was crucified was actually made out of wood. And sometimes it is referred to in the Bible as the tree of Calvary. And so we can say that the Saviour was upon the tree, and he was upon the tree to make this big word behind me, atonement. He was upon the tree to make atonement for us. Now, I'm not very keen in big words. They're hard to pronounce, and they're even harder to spell, and they use up all the ink in my pens. So let's take that word and make it a little bit smaller so we can really understand what it means. The Lord Jesus died upon the tree of Calvary to atone for us. See how I made it smaller? But you know what? It really still doesn't explain it. Sure it doesn't. So let's take this word and break it into two pieces. It'll be different, but it'll be the same. You watch and see. 
The Savior died on the cross for us. He took the punishment that we deserved. He paid the price for all our sin so that we could be, look at it, at one with God. And because of this, we no longer need to hide away and be ashamed like Adam was. We no longer need to be astonished or indeed even perhaps anxious that God knows our every thought and the intents of our heart and life. And just like little Zacchaeus, God is willing to accept us just as we are. This is, however, only possible. If we come humbly, repenting, that means turning away from our sin and trusting in all that he has done for us at the place called Calvary, believing that there he suffered and died for us, believing that he bore the punishment that rightly should have been met out upon us, and accepting that he alone paid the price in full, in full a price that we could never pay to make us free from the debt that we owe to the Lord. Why did the Lord Jesus do this for us? Well, he did it in love, but he also did it because simply there's no other way for us to be forgiven. There's no other way for us to have peace with God. There's no other way for us to be at one with him forever and forever. And so there we have it today, boys and girls, the story of four men and four trees and four words now we know, ashamed, astonished, accepted, and at one. May God bless these few thoughts to your hearts. Let's pray together before we finish. We'll do our ABC of prayer. Arms folded, heads bowed, and eyes closed. Let's just pray. Dear Lord, we come to Thee in our Saviour's name, and we thank Thee for help given today as we have presented this story to the boys and girls. And we do ask that little ones today would realise that they can come to the Saviour. They don't need to hide away and be ashamed. They can be astonished that the Lord, yes, can see into their heart, but they can rejoice in the fact that they can be accepted by thee and that they too, because of what the Saviour did at Calvary, can be at one with God. We thank thee for the work done at Calvary, that we can be saved and have our lives totally changed, just like many of these men we read of today. For we ask it all in our Saviour's wonderful and precious name. Amen. Thank you.